right, so in this video, I want to show you the 9340 relay and go over some simple steps of how to use a 9340, what the different uh, parts are of it, and what some of the ratings are uh, on the actual relay itself. All right, so first off, this is a typical 9340 relay box. They're made by multiple different brands. You know, the 9 is cut off here, but it's 9340 here. This stands for double pull, double throw. And so the throw is the part of the relay that actually moves, and the pull is the part that it connects to. So a double pull, double throw relay is going to be a normally open and normally closed relay, meaning it can it can be either uh, it can have both normally closed contacts and normally open contacts. Let's go ahead and open the box. All right, so this is a typical 9340. When you look at the top, the, the first thing that I want you to notice is that um, you can it has a little diagram printed right on the top of the 9340. That's one of the things I really like about it. A lot of relays do have a diagram printed on them, but the 9340 is nice because it's actually in proximity to the actual terminals. So that means that this is terminal 3, this is terminal 2, terminal 1, 4, 5, and 6, and then these are the two coil terminals. So that's how you can identify the actual terminals. And it actually shows the connection points. So you can see that one is connected to three through a set of normally open contacts. One is connected to two through a set of normally closed contacts. So if you're not really, if you have, don't really have a lot of experience reading diagrams, um, you can trust me, this little symbol here, the two, the two lines with the slash through it, that's normally closed. That little symbol there, right here, is normally open contacts. Let's take a quick look at the coil itself. So this is a this is an electromagnet, electromagnetic coil, and the coil has a rating. If you look on this data tag here, you can see it says coil 24 volt, 50 or 60 hertz, which means that the rated coil is rated for 50 or 60 hertz. So it could be used in the U.S. or other countries that use 50 hertz, and it's rated for 24 volts, which means that when you apply 24 volts between these two terminals, so when you have a potential difference of 24 volts between these two points. This creates an electromagnetic force that switches the relay, okay? So you can tell that this is the coil, even though if you look at the diagram on the top here on the 9340, the coil isn't marked. There's nothing, there's nothing on here that shows that this is the coil, but you can tell it's the coil really easily just by looking here. You can see this little wire, how it's connected from this terminal down, and then it goes down around and actually connects to this coil underneath. So this coil creates an electromagnetic force that then switches the relay contacts. Uh, uh, for the relay, we'll call the contacts, um, sometimes some people will call them contacts, some people will call them the switch, some people will call them points. So you would say between one and three, so between one and three is a normally open set of contacts, set of points, or a normally open switch. Any of those terms are kind of used in the trade. Um, but technically speaking, they, they call them contacts within a relay. And so what switches this relay, it's a, it's a remote switch, what switches it on and off is whether or not we have 24 volts applied to the actual coil of the relay itself. So if you look at this data tag here, you'll see the coil is rated at 24 volts, but then we have contact ratings. And this is the ampacity, how much amperage, what is the amp capacity of this relay. And so at 120 volts, it can have 82.8 locked rotor amps, that's that sort of instantaneous power that it, uh, a motor uses when it first starts up or when it's locked, and then 13.8 full load amps at 120 volts. When you go to 240 volts, that drops down to 6.9 full load amps, and 39.6 locked rotor amps, and then it just keeps going. You'll see, so these are for motor loads or inductive loads. These are magnetic loads, generally motors. So if you're controlling a motor with it, you have to follow these rules based on the voltage. But if you're controlling a heater, that's a resistive load. So that would be like a, a heat strip or a incandescent light bulb. And you can see at 150, at 120 volts, it can control 15 amps. 15 amps can be run through it. That's the amp capacity and 15 amps the same at 277, and then it drops down to 10 if you go up to 480 volts. So that's the ampacity of the actual contacts, or the contact rating. How much amperage, how many electrons can go through these contacts without the uh, relay failing because of, of melting, uh, or, or the actual um, uh, electrons bridging the contact points in the case of high voltage, which is why you see that um, ampacity go down the higher the voltage goes. That's one of the reasons. Let's do a quick demonstration of how this works. I'm going to go ahead and put my meter on the ohm scale. So it's going to read in ohms.
but really we're not reading ohms, we're reading continuity, which is essentially just pass, fail, path or no path. So you see here how it rings out, it's showing continuity. So it's showing a path in between these two probes. So when I go from here to here, these are normally closed contacts, so there's a path. Now if I were to switch the relay, meaning I were to energize it with power here, then it would switch and there would be no path between here and here, and now there would be a path between here and here. So you see right now between one and three, we have no path. Between one and two, there's a path because the relay is closed. All right. Right now there's a path between these two. And there's no path between these two. So now let's go ahead and switch the relay. I'm going to go ahead and connect it to power. What I've got here, I've got a little 40 VA transformer connected to 120 volts with a plug. Right here, so I'm going to go ahead and plug this in, and then I can control this with a switch. Just a little, just a little blade switch that I'm going to set right here. We're going to go to our relay coil. Out of the other side of the relay coil, and this is where a lot of guys get confused, because this is not a switch, this is a load. This bottom part here is actually taking uh, electrical energy and it's converting it into electromagnetism that's switching the contacts. So whereas contacts are just making and breaking switches, making and breaking points up here, the actual relay coil needs to have 24 volts of potential applied across it. So in order to do that, I'm going to take the other side of the transformer, the other side of the transformer secondary here, and I'm going to connect that right here. So now what's happening is we have our hot leg coming out of our transformer that's going into this switch, and then out of this switch, it's going into our relay coil and then back to the common side, the other side of the transformer. So we got our plug here. I'm going to unplug it in. Switch is open right now. So when I energize this switch, the relay should switch. You can hear the relay switching, and that's because we're applying power. My red wire is power coming from the transformer, so my red wire comes here, goes around into the switch, and then out to one side of the relay. So when I close this, we're applying 24 volts of potential to the coil. So this is our coil. If you look here, so the switch is open right now. If you look here, this is our coil. You can see the little wires connecting down that connect down to the base. So when I apply 24 volts to it, it closes the relay. So let's go ahead and put this so you can see right now the circuit is open. That's why it says open here on the screen. I'm going to go ahead and put this on the normally open switch here. Normally open contact points and now I'm going to close this. Clips. So now the circuit that's open is now closed. Pull this up here so you can see it a little better. I've got my alligator clips connected to one and three. Right now we're open because the coil is not energized. As soon as I energize the coil, it makes the circuit. The opposite is true. If I go between one and two, it's normally closed. So when I don't have uh, 24 volts of potential applied across the coil, then it has made a circuit, so there is a connection. And then as soon as I energize it, it breaks the connection. So it was normally closed and it goes open when I power the coil with 24 volts. So that's basically it. That's how it works. Same thing is true of this lower set. Normally closed, open. I'm going to go ahead and connect between four and six normally open and it goes closed. So you can see here this is how this is connected. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect everything so you can see it again. So that's basically it. I'm going to go ahead and unplug power. We've got a 9340 relay. Depending on whether or not you apply 24 volts of potential across the coil, it switches the state of the contacts from normally closed to 
open when it's energized and from normally open to closed when it's energized. Used for a lot of different a lot of different uh, applications and you have to make sure to pay attention to both the coil rating and voltage and then the contact ratings and ampacity based on whether or not it is a motor load otherwise known as an inductive load which just means magnetic or whether it's a resistive load which is generally things that create light and heat. There you have it. I'm Brian with HVAC School. We'll see you next time.